Hey, Kevin here, Sky Labs, bringing you another video. Definitely gonna be a fun one. We wanted to talk about the white van speaker scam. And if you're unfamiliar with this, you definitely wanna check out this video, especially if you are out looking for vintage speakers. You don't wanna get stuck with a pair of these secondhand, even more than the person that originally bought them brand new back in the day. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Check it out, here we go. It just might be the most successful con you've never heard of. You pull into a gas station or a grocery store and you're suddenly approached by a sales pitch you just can't turn down. Its victims call it the white van speaker scam. So what, what kind is it? Vanderbach. Vanderbach, and how, how much is it worth normally? 2,500. 2,500. And the white van speaker scam was really popular, I think starting in the 70s and went through all the way up until today. I don't think it's as prevalent as it once was, but pretty much every major city in the United States seemed to have one of these set up. And what they would do is they would source this really cheap, inexpensive equipment. Um, they would go to a theater or any place with a high traffic parking lot and they would essentially give you the sales pitch of either, you know, we had this big install job. These are the products that are left over from it or accounting screwed up. We ordered too many products. The boss said to get rid of them at a discount price. We don't want to bring them back to the shop and put them back into inventory. They would show you all this literature and pamphlets um, with these really high list prices that uh, were just fabricated out of thin air, including you know, the specs of the equipment you were purchasing. And unfortunately, once people realized they did get scammed, a lot of times they'd have fake phone numbers or fake addresses. There really isn't anything illegal about it. It's more just really immoral because they're essentially just fabricating a product at a price point that is just really unrealistic. And uh, a lot of people got duped. It's really too bad. This was a really, really shit thing to do to people. So after watching that clip and seeing how the scam works, you might be thinking, you know, who would actually fall for this? I've got a funny story for you. About 20 years ago, I had a roommate and I remember he had gone to the movies. He came home and he was just super pumped up. He had these brand new speakers. I think they were Da Vinci's. And he's up in the living room pulling his old stereo part and he's putting these new speakers in. He's kind of telling me how, yeah, I was leaving the movie theater and a couple guys in a van had all this extra equipment. They were wanting to get rid of it. Um, I got it really cheap. He even said, you know, you could probably catch them. They might still be at the movie theater now if you want to grab a pair. And I, I remember thinking, uh, let, let me check these out first, you know? He's getting them all hooked up. And I remember both of us sitting back and listening to him. And I'm thinking, you know, Ooh, you know, this is not good. You could actually see it in his face as he's listening to these, trying to talk himself into um, not wanting to throw up, you know, because he knew uh, he had gotten scammed at this point. I think he left them hooked up for maybe a month or so before he finally admitted defeat and either brought his old speakers back or got different ones. I don't remember which one he did, but they didn't last very long because they were terrible. They looked nice. They did. The packaging was great, but um, yeah, they sounded terrible. You know, and in retrospect, you can kind of see why a movie theater might be a really good place to pull this kind of scam. You know, if if it's a Friday night, you know, people are out maybe on a date, um, they're feeling good, they just saw a good movie, and they catch you at the right time, got a little extra money in your pocket, and you think you're getting a great deal on a set of speakers. Um, I think that's what happened to my roommate at the time. I doubt he ever does that again. And, you know, it he didn't lose his rent money on the deal, but he definitely lost out on a few hundred bucks and uh, but i got a good story out of it and there it is if you've got one of these stories uh and and you feel like you can laugh about it at this point put it in the comments it'd be great to hear those stories and maybe you know laugh at a mistake you made 20 years ago or so so hopefully you've moved on from the pain at this point and you're willing to share that in the comments for us to enjoy and laugh with you a little bit 
And I would imagine the next thing you are all wanting to know is, well, you know, I mean, how bad are they and how do they sound? And, um, we've had quite a few of them. I've seen quite a few of them in person. And while some of them are not terrible, none of them are really that good. Although we've had a couple of customers come in really kind of praising their speakers and, you know, they'll say something about, I don't know why I can't find them online, you know, or any information about them, but they're really good. We had one guy, we, we nicknamed him liquid cooled, um, because he had a pair of white van speakers that, you know, he said, I don't know what model they are, but they say they're liquid cooled. And I knew in my head what he was talking about. And, um, yeah, I didn't let on, you know, I didn't want to, you know, bust his bubble or anything, but we, so we nicknamed them liquid cooled, but really in all honesty, some of them don't sound that bad. You know, you got to think even a lot of speakers in the eighties that would have come with, you know, if you bought a all in one stereo from like, uh, any of you that are old enough, which most of you are, according to our demographics, um, if you went to JC Penney's or Sears and you saw the, the whole stereo in a box, CD player, double cassette deck, uh, EQ, turntable, receiver, amplifier, everything, and speakers in a wood cabinet. A lot of times those speakers really weren't that much better than the white van speakers, you know, hollow cabinets, thin particle board, um, really just cheap drivers. So if you had one of those back in the day, that's kind of what you should expect from hearing a pair of white van speakers. A lot of these speakers and electronics that you would buy from these manufacturers, they would actually put concrete and weights inside of the speakers and electronics. And it was just another way to give you the illusion that the electronics or the speakers that you're buying are a lot better than they really are. So how do you spot a set of white van speakers? And there's quite a few tells. Um, really, you want to look out for buzzwords that would be on a speaker that shouldn't be on there, like liquid cooled or digital ready or HD or really just insane specs that just don't seem possible for a speaker that weighs 20 pounds, like, you know, 2000 Watts, stuff like that. Um, the other thing you want to look out for are names that are really similar to brand names that you have heard like Harmon and Logan or Kirsch or Lanson instead of Lansing. Um, I've even had a couple pairs of, they were Paramount speakers. They literally had the logo of the Paramount movie production company on it. And I would imagine these would have been sold in a movie theater parking lot. You know, they'd probably give you a story like, you know, did you like the sound you heard in the theater in there? These are the exact same speakers that we installed in that theater, you know, and unfortunately people with maybe too much money and not listening to their gut in a good mood, maybe trying to impress their date says, yeah, here you go. You know, um, put them in the car. Those are the things you want to watch out for. Also, there's several lists online, but Audio Karma has one. We'll put a link in the description and it's all the brand names and models of all the known white van speakers that are out there. So if you're out and about uh, hunting down vintage speakers and you really don't know or you've never heard of a brand, definitely go check out one of those sites that have lists. And the white van speaker scam is still happening today, just kind of in a different way. I think, you know, you're just seeing them on the, the used market now that vintage speakers have kind of become popular again, or vintage stereo equipment in general. And, you know, I see them on Facebook all the time. And a lot of times, you know, the person selling them might not even know that they're selling white van speakers. And it's hard to tell if they actually do know. Some sellers uh, actually boast it. You know, they put it right in there. These are white van speakers because just like everything else, there's collectors of this stuff, especially in mint condition. So, um, you know, you just want to be careful. It's still happening. I do think most of the white van scams kind of moved online. You know, um, you have to really be careful 
uh, purchasing secondhand products on Facebook and eBay and stuff like that, just looking on like Alibaba, it's kind of scary how close these counterfeits are getting and how easy they are to get. You know, um, looking at really popular microphones or even uh, shoes and apparel and stuff like that, it would be really easy to buy a lot of this product, um, maybe wear it, use it, scuff it a little bit, and then, you know, put it on the used market and you might unknowingly buy it. And unfortunately, people are getting scammed all the time. I know I'm off topic here, but, um, you know, with the way things are today in the digital world, I think you have to be really conscious and really kind of do your homework before buying electronics online. Just make sure you're getting it from a reputable seller because it seems like the white van speaker scam just moved online and it's a little bit harder to detect because there's no face in front of it. You know, you're, you're buying a product that is based off a legitimate image sometimes. So please share your story. If you have had an encounter with the white van speaker scam, um, I think it'd be fun to read through those and, um, hear how it turned out for you, you know, whether or not you took the bait or not. So thanks for watching another video. Always really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support you guys give to this channel. Uh, all the comments, sharing and liking. I had no idea that we would even get, you know, a thousand subscribers. So being, we just crossed over the 20,000 threshold, um, it's really exciting and it's fun. So hopefully we're going to get you guys more content that you're enjoying and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.